What is up, Facebook land? Welcome to another episode of the Two Dates and a Dash podcast. I'm your host, Matt Kubler. Before I introduce my buddy, my friend, a guy who's become a mentor to me, Tony Grebmeyer, I want to first dedicate the show like I always do. Um, I'm going to dedicate the show to um, autism. Um, it, my brother was autistic um, before there was an autism even identified. Um, but my daughter's a, a college swimmer, and one of her rivals and one of her best friends is the, the Division II Katie Ledecky. She's the best freestyle swimmer in Division II, and she goes to Westchester University. Her name is Georgia Wright, and she's from England, and she recently was diagnosed um, at the age of 20 as autistic, and which is a very late diagnosis. Um, and there was a story today in Swimming World magazine um, online about her and that diagnosis. And she's just an amazing um, person. Um, she is the best swimmer in the country. She's a national champion in three different events, all the ones my daughter swims in. Um, and my daughter, we're in the same conference, so they swim against each other in dual meets. And at the conferences, my daughter will never be a champion because of Georgia, because she is just that amazing. And But my daughter is so appreciative of her because of her willingness to help my daughter and it's rare that you see a competitor hug someone from the other team before a race and after a race. And she does that to my daughter before every race. Um, she wants my daughter to do well. My daughter wants her to do well. And I'm just very proud of Georgia for coming out publicly and sharing her story with autism um, and the struggles that she's had with that um, since being prior to being diagnosed and then since being diagnosed. So my, my dedication is to autism, but specifically Georgia Ray at Westchester University. Um, the show, where can you hear it? You can hear it anywhere that you listen to podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, Anchor, you name it. It's on like 12 or 13 different platforms. Um, wherever you like to listen, feel free to listen. All right, my man, Tony. So Tony and I met uh, about a year and a half ago online when I asked him to be, for me to be a guest on his show. And uh, he agreed to let me on a show, which and I, and at the time I was just this guy trying to figure out who I was as a speaker. Um, I'd never listened to a podcast in my life. Um, to be honest, I really don't listen to them now. I listen to certain people's because they're friends of mine. And I want to hear what they have to say and how well they do their job because I'm, I'm a fan, but I'm not really a podcast listener. Um, so I was sending messages out and, and friending people online and just trying to figure out who's who in the zoo with this whole podcast speaker world. And um, Tony was very gracious and allowed me to be on a show and, and was one of the, the best ones I did out of the 16 or 17 I did in 2018. And uh, since then, we've become friends and, and he's offered his time and his expertise and his knowledge and his friendship and his mentorship um, and never asked for anything in return, which to me says a lot about him as a man. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my friend, Tony Grebmeyer. What's up, buddy? Thank you so much for having me here. I'm excited, and it's nice to be on the other side of the mic, uh, the person answering questions instead of asking them. So I'm excited. Well, I think it's going to be fun, and, and, and I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous um, because I know that uh, the way that you handled me and allowed me to just sort of breathe when I was doing the show, I want to be able to re reciprocate that and allow you to breathe as well and just sort of let the show have its own course without having any preconceived plan or idea, which is kind of the premise of my show anyways. I like um, it. It's my style. I wing, I wing it 99% of my life. Um, Good. We're so, having fun. As long as you're having fun, we're doing it all right. Yeah, it's a blast. And and, I, and I'll say that, you know, I, I learned a lot from, from just being a guest on your show and, and listening to how you treat guests and, and how you handle yourself. And you know, between you and Chris Lockhead and John Broman, um, and Josh Berglund, there's, there's some guys that I just really figured out where my soft sweet spot was. So um, thank you for that. So you've listened to some shows, you understand the premise, and I ask one question and we just sort of figure it out from there. So the question I'm going to ask you, and it's very broad, could go many different directions, but who is Tony Grebmeyer? Well, first off, thank you. Uh, a man of faith, uh, a person who at the core is trying to be better than he was yesterday. Um, if you look at my bio, it tells you the three things that I am. You know, first, I'm a father, uh, I'm a husband, and I'm a friend. And I've used that kind of as my vehicle to understand that despite your past, regardless of what you've done or where you come from, you can create anything you want for your future. And uh, there's a lot of stories that we tell ourselves, but at the core of who I am, I'm a man of faith, I'm, I'm a lover of God. 
I'm a believer that somebody knocked on my door and saved my life in the moment when I felt like ending it. Um, that didn't happen by mistake. So I can't explain it. So I just believe. And somebody who every day is lit on fire and ready to go out and just help people to ignite their lives and to go pursue the things that they're passionate about. So I'm a champion for champions. Well, there's so many ways I can go with this. And the first one that just pops out to me, um, because I think when he, when somebody looks at your bio or sees what you're doing now or, or watches your show or follows you on social media, they can see what you're doing. It's, it's a very visible, real thing that's happening. But why you're doing it, how you got to where you are today, that, that high and low journey of life um, is usually the thing that allows the person who's watching today have more respect for, for what's happening. And for me, you know, when I, when I learned of your story, when I learned of um, your struggle with, with alcohol and, and, and depression and, and feeling of lack of worth, it resonated with me because I, I had the same issues. And uh, let's start there. Let's figure out why Tony is who he is today and where that journey started as far as, um, and we don't need to go back to when you were, when I was three, I, you know, but figuring out how you got to where you are. But a lot of my story is the story, or at least the picture that I saw growing up. Like I, I, I use this a lot as the illustration is, you know, I thought what was right and what everybody wanted was the wife waiting at the front door with the slippers. The husband comes home from a hard day's work, says, oh my gosh, you know, here's your slippers. Go have a seat. Let me make you a cocktail. You know, I'll cook dinner. I'll be out in a few minutes and we can sit down. Like, I just, I don't know, leave it to Beaver. I don't know what it was, but I saw that kind of growing up and I, I kind of wanted that in the back of my head and that's not what I had. Um, I would come home from school and most of the time my parents would be gone. Um, my parents divorced when I was early on. And so I grew up with a gay father in the seventies. That wasn't something people talked about. Um, and my mom was a school teacher trying to put you know food on the table for my sister who was six years older than me and myself. So she worked three jobs. So I came home and all of my friends in the neighborhood had the kind of fairy tale fantasy, mom and dad, white picket fence, nice cars, everything was great. And I'm sitting here going, um, what's wrong with this picture? And um, by the time I was in high school, my senior year, I pretty much drank every single day. My wife likes to tell people, um, and I love it because she's like, I've only seen him drink or, or, or be drunk like twice. It wasn't like it was this big thing. It's just I had an alcoholic father, I had an alcoholic grandfather. I had struggles up that line. And so what I realized was I just can't drink alcohol. And uh, there's a way somebody put it once and I've always used it. Everybody's an allotted amount of drugs and alcohol. It's all sitting in front of them. I used all mine up and started taking others. And that's when I realized I needed to stop. And, uh, you know, along my path to where I'm at today, I was at some of my darkest, deepest kind of feelings of worthlessness. Like I didn't belong. Um, I had separated from my wife. We were apart for three years and just I contemplated the whole idea of just ending my life. And in the moment of kind of going through that process, writing my suicide note, I received a phone call. I tell this story because I need it to be heard because people need to realize that there's somebody like me sitting on a couch somewhere feeling sorry for themselves, like their life is worthless, that nobody loves them and that it's over. And in that very moment, my friend said, hey, I'm coming to see you. And a couple of minutes later, he walked into my, my apartment and gave me a hug and said, you know, Tony, your life has meaning and your life has purpose, but what you're doing right now doesn't. And I give thanks every time I can to my buddy, John Monazzeri, um, for his love, his support, and for just acting on that idea or that feeling or that thought deep down inside to go do something versus do nothing and then read in the morning, you know, paper or on Facebook, man lost his life. Oh man, I knew him. I wish I would have done something. So I am so grateful that he did that. And then from there really kind of went on this, this journey of saying, hey, that was my past. What do I want for my future? And my wife and I were able to repair our marriage, move back in. Just last year, we celebrated 20 years of marriage, of two adult kids, weird to say, 18 and 20. Um, and for the last, you know, 10 plus years of their life, they didn't have to see their dad loaded and passed out on the couch and really been a champion for them to just go out and create their best life and their best future and, and be a supporter of that. 
that's all part of my past, but it's very much who I am because I'm literally trying to do that for everybody that I meet today is tell me a little bit about who you are because that's who you say you are. And then I ask the next question is who is it that you want to be? What is it that you want? And then what do you want to do to go get there? And let me see how I can open my role to deck, support you with, you know, networks, connections and people to go make that happen. And I want to surround you, Matt, I didn't have to say yes to having you on my show. You're like, I remember your message. It was long. And you're like, man, whatever you can give me, just let me know. And I'm like, dude, I want to help people like you because you have a dream. And who would I be where I'm at today? I'm not in any higher mind position. I'm just a human being trying to figure out life like everybody else is. But I liked your passion. I love the fact that you went for it instead of like, oh, I kind of want a podcast someday. No, you went and asked. And I think there's something wrong in our society today where we stop asking for what we want. And so we don't raise our hand. We don't jump up and say, this is who I am. This is what I want. Instead, I feel sorry for myself. Nobody loves me and poor me. And I'm like, no, you're an empowered human being with dreams. I want to go help you live those dreams out. So your history with alcohol, your history with depression and, and feeling of lack of self-worth. You know, when, when you say your, your wife and you separated for three years, you know, during that three year period, what were you doing as far as um, a profession? What were you doing as far as your your passion? Were you involved in anything that was helping to keep you along? Or were you literally just sort of like get swallowed up in life and, and not really moving forward at all? I was like a transit going from one town to the next. I literally was so lost in my journey. I, I had no compass, maybe even morals at the time of like which direction to head. I have still been the owner of the company that I'm at all of these years later. So uh, I run a company, uh, it's called Chip Offers. We offer fulfillment services. And so hopefully through my story today, you'll understand why I'm all about personal fulfillment today, where I was only about professional fulfillment before. Right. Um, so uh, I remember the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. That was me. I was living that like, hey, I'll just, do a little bit better today, but the problem was it was the same as I did yesterday and it didn't get me any better results. Um, so living in Los Angeles at the lowest of lows, great thing between my wife and I, we never missed any major milestones, kids' birthdays, celebrations, even our anniversary, we'd still get together, celebrate her birthday, Christmas, Thanksgiving. It's just, I, I drove a wedge into our relationship. And, and that's all about taking ownership and responsibility at first. All I wanted to do was move on. I didn't want to be married anymore because I didn't have any um, great models to follow. I didn't have any of those, those true stories um, that I talked about in my childhood. All of those people have either died, their relationships have separated. I think I have like one or two families from my childhood or they're still together all these years later. And I just thought maybe my life would be better. And I used to say all the time, like, if it's not green on the other side, I'll just bring a can of green spray paint and I'll make it green. I'll paint better, greener pastures. And that's the problem with our mind. If we're left to my own devices, I will definitely take myself out. And I wasn't going to church. I, I wasn't near any support. Didn't even know about, you know, a 12 step program. I was probably naive. Um, but Towards the, the last year prior to moving home, I, I ended up going to um, a program uh, called Landmark Education. And I went and I literally heard some people talking around me and I realized, you know what? Like, I just haven't been honest with myself. I haven't been honest with my feelings and what I, what I want in my marriage and in my life. And I wasn't even thinking about getting back together with my my wife at the time, but I was thinking about what would I want in my marriage? What would I want to be as a father? Cause I wasn't being that father and all of these things. And what I realized going and expressing what I wanted was probably the first time I've ever done that. Cause most of the time, nobody lets you talk. No one really gives two S's about um, what you have to say. I mean, they, they, they're selfish and self-centered and most of the time they're out, out for ulterior motives they are out for themselves. And, and after I went through all these dark days and I really got to the conclusion of like, you know what? God put all these wonderful people in my life. I need to start doing things differently. So I shifted and literally started working a 12-step program, started going to church, you know, started doing personal development, started spending my time 
looking at what I wasn't doing and saying, all right, and I love my buddy Sean Stevenson today. I wish I would have met him 15, 20 years ago, but Sean, Sean today has something that I use and I stick with all the time, a when life works list. And when your life works, you know what you are doing. And those things are the magic things like going to the gym, eating healthy, you know, writing in your journal, listening to personal development, reading a book, talking to your wife, you know, taking walks. If you know those things just work, your life gets better. And then you have a, unfortunately, we all have one, one life sucks list. And, you know, our life sucks and it's like, hey, you know, I'm not eating healthy. I haven't been working out. I haven't been journaling. I haven't been going to church. I haven't been tithing. I haven't been doing these things. And I can live in either. And I have to choose every single day my winning attitude. I really do. So I wish I would have known those things, but I remember kind of going through this 10 plus years ago, it was all progress. And one of the things that frustrates me, and, and maybe you've dealt with this in some form of your life, uh, people will say, oh, you've only been doing it for a week, Matt, you know, give me a year and then, you know, show me the results like fitness, gym or whatever. And people are like fast to, to say that we're going to, we're going to fail. And I, and I just want to tell people I'm like, your journey is your journey. And let's not put up more hurdles in your journey. Let's make your, 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 your rest of your life, the best of your life. And let's make them steps that you're just taking. Like today, I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. I'm going to go to the gym and just make it a habit that you never want to stop. My, my neighbor, Todd McGuire talks about it all the time, do something today that you never want to stop doing and, and watch how your life unfolds and just gets better. And I, I'm so grateful for great mentors like yourself and others in my life who speak truth and wisdom and encouragement and constantly are lifting me up. And I'm, I'm grateful that I have an amazing wife and a partner that we're basically empty nesters. And she looks at me and I look at her and we're like, you wanna go for a walk? And I'm like, no, cause I'm still selfish and self-centered. And I'm like, no, I don't go for a walk. And then I remind myself, why? This is my partner for life. Yeah, I wanna go for a walk with you. I love you, let's go. And then when I'm on my walk, I don't wanna stop because we're having a good time. And, and I have those old behavior patterns that still pop up. And I'm constantly working on that old behavior and of, to be a really good person reminds me to stop, pause, check my pulse and realize I'm alive and I can do anything I want today as long as I'm 100 percent off um, honest with myself and with others and tell them how I'm feeling. If I'm off today, I, I need to tell you I'm not feeling great. And I couldn't do that before. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't let you see me as a failure. I couldn't let you see me as somebody who was, you know, what I like to call not authentic, not real. Like I spent a lifetime trying to look good to avoid looking bad. Right. And today I let what you see be what you see. And I don't want to be one way on Facebook and a different way offline. I want to be the same person all the time. I, I love that. I mean, that two things, I want to go back to something, but I want to mention something real quick about the, the need to, to take each day for what it is and give, each day it's it's value it and it's your best attempt to make it the best day i learned i i was always a guy that needed to control everything <laughs> I, I just it's how i'm wired i i need to have the ultimate outcome say in everything that i'm involved in and i learned it in, in being a business owner being an entrepreneur um being an inventor building something from nothing um starting a speaking business being a podcaster that none of this is really in my control. <laughs> and the things that I've learned since since I stopped putting arbitrary deadlines or um, expectations on myself that I have no understanding of and, and no ability to, to reach that outcome because I don't really know what I'm doing yet. I realized that the minute I stopped doing that and I allowed my outcomes to be based on my effort, my attitude and how I approach it every single day versus some timeline that I set up that says, by this date, I'll be doing this, by this date, I'll be doing that. Everything started to work for me. Mm. And that was January, I, I made a, a, I always had a, you know, everybody does their New Year's resolution. And I would always have one that says, okay, this is gonna be the best year ever. And I had these lists of things I was gonna accomplish. And this was the first year that I can remember that I said, I don't have any resolution other than I'm gonna live every day for its value. And I'm not gonna have an expectation on where I'm supposed to be or when I'm supposed to be there, because that's up to God. And as long as I continue to work as hard as I always work, which is in, ingrained in my DNA, then I'm going to get to wherever I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there. And that that has been the most liberating thing for me ever, um, because I, I it took all that weight of, you know, P 
people think that I'm some huge success because I do a shit ton of stuff. I just do a lot of stuff to keep people off, <laughs> off not, not paying attention to any one thing. I'm very good at being a good person. That's what I'm really good at. And how I am as far as a businessman or any of those, I don't give a shit. What I do know is that if I'm good in everything that I do and my intentions are pure in everything I do, at some point in time, this is all going to figure itself out. And once I let that be and marinate and become part of me, it's been amazing. And so something as simple as getting a Fitbit and knowing that if I get 10,000 steps today, that equals 5.3 miles or whatever it is. And, and I was active. I never realized how sedentary I was sitting in a police car all day until I put this damn thing on my wrist. And I realized at 5 p.m. when I'm done my shift, I had 3,000 steps. And I'm like, how is that possible? You put it on the tire. It's right. <laughs> like I could have done this more and made it work, right? But I didn't. And so it's stuff like that that, that allows you to sort of put everything into perspective that I think has really helped me. And I think you know, it's, it's essentially what you were saying is, is that every day you wake up with a plan to be better than you were the day before and as good as you possibly can be today. Yeah, no, I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, my wife, Amber, talks about all the time, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And so if you're a person who keeps starting and stopping, that's a great pattern. If you really want to change it, to, you can flip it. You can flip it around. And, you know, I'm all in or I'm all out. I have no dimmer switch. There's no in between for me, right? And so if you usually find me all in, you will find me exhausted on the couch, maybe four to five weeks down the road, if I've been in that mindset of all in and all out, um, my wife will go up, oh, he's getting sick or he's tired. Like, and she's great. She helps me to just heal up and, and get going again. And I have to remind myself that I need to uh, slow down and love myself too. I, I'm really bad at taking care of myself. I'm really good at helping others. And that's been one of my blind spots that have become really apparent over the last year or so. And I've been working at you know, making better choices but that's something that I'm aware of today that I wasn't paying attention to. And I think you even posted about, you know, just since you decided to go on this journey and, you know, don't put a deadline on it. You already have a deadline. It's the end date. I don't know when that's going to be, but if you can prolong it by taking good care of yourself today, man, better, let's go do that. And so I, I just wanted to commend you for, for getting after it too and making decisions and not eat donuts, right? Like the go out and do the work, go get five, you know, five, 10,000 steps a day, go get the extra stuff in um, and next thing you know, what you realize is that you're doing better. And that's, that's really what I want uh, you and myself and anybody I come in contact with to know, hey, we can do better together than we can by ourselves. So let's support one another in our missions in life. Let's get back to, because uh, I really want to, because I, I know how when I went through and we talked about it on your show, when I went through my period of depression after my brother died and I met my wife and married my wife and had a child and I was unable to love and give them the love that they deserved, how that affected me, knowing that I was doing that, but couldn't stop it. So when you were going through your dark period, when, when alcohol was consuming your life and, and you were a father of two and you were married and that was falling apart, when you finally made the commitment to enter the 12 step program, and I know one of the steps is to make reconciliation or, or to you know make it right for the people that you've hurt. How did you go about um, creating that, that new you so that your children could identify and say, that's the person that I always wanted you to be and your wife do the same thing? How did that, how did you work on that process? Uh, Jim Rohn talks about it, Wayne Dyer talks about it. My, uh, my first sponsors here in Colorado talks about it. I had to change my thinking. My thinking was wrong. And how I viewed the things that were happening um, were backwards. And I just had to flip the script. And uh, Buckminster Fuller talks about it. You know, to change something, to change the reality, you, you got to completely create a new one. And so I had to create a new norm. You know, I had so many years, I think 36 years at the time, of being a certain way, drinking and living and lying and doing the things that I did. So that's my old Tony thinking. And then literally I have 10 years of this new thinking. And what the world sees right now is the 10 years of the new thinking. The old story still can come up from time to time, but it's the new thinking. It's the new way of being. It's the new way of loving. It's the new way of caring. It's the new way of opening and holding a door for somebody. It's because I changed my thinking. So what, is, what do my kids and wife get to experience? 
I still am a jerk and I can go do my old thinking and be that person that's that 36 year old Tony again, who's selfish and self-centered and, you know, a little bit immature. And you can then also have the new one. And I, my, my wife does an encouraging job of just saying, Hey, let's go. You know, better, let's do better. Um, so, you know, I got to remind myself, I'm, I'm, I'm not have it all figured out. I'm just somebody today saying to myself, my relationships with my kids are better because like my youngest son will say, Hey dad, you only got one more year before, you know, Ethan's out of high school and you got to work on these relationships. I'm like, thanks. You know, and I love those reminders or my wife will say, Hey, like call your mom back. I know you're mad at her, but you don't call her. It's like you're one mom. Like I have great people in my life that can support me because just because I found sobriety doesn't mean I found everything to be perfect. You know, it's not peaches and cream 24 seven. I still have these mistakes, but how I did it was change my thinking. And I literally said, and, and I ask everybody that I meet, like, what is it that you want? What is it that you got out of bed for today? Like, why did you get out of bed? I got out of bed to be of service. I literally got out of bed to be of service today. Um, by being a guest on your show is just an awesome way to kind of end my work day, my day at the office. It's a total blessing. Um, I just got out of a, a coaching mentorship session for a couple hours just learning and, you know, who knows where that can go. And I had all these phone calls and everything that I do, I created the end result, which is I want to be on those phone calls. I want to be on those meetings. I want to be on those podcasts. So I changed my life from feeling like I have to, to I get to. And that result then equals great people who call you up on the phone and go, hey, you haven't been to a 12 step meeting in a while. Everything good? Like I built support today into my life. I built community around my life. I built, you know, with a journal, I built a whole community component because I didn't want people to isolate because that's what I did. So I'm doing the opposite of everything that I didn't see work. And I'm trying to do everything that I know to help people lift them up to say, hey, look, it's possible. We're going to do this together. I mean, I, I, I will say that until I die. We're better together than we are by ourselves. I, I think one thing that I end up having, you know, been on podcasts and, and had people on my show that have, have gone through trauma or, or alcohol abuse or sexual abuse or, or some sort of um, traumatic event in their life that caused them to, to act um, in a negative way on their selves and, and outwardly. The one thing that successful people that have come out of that and, and found the other side to be brighter and happier, the, the, the common thread is this, um, this belief that life is meant to serve others. Life is meant to help other people to be of service to your fellow man. And I think that's um, the cool thing that I'm experiencing in this. And, and I am by nature, not trustworthy. Um, I'm just not. And it's, it's 26 years of dealing with untrustworthy people as a cop. So I just don't naturally jump in and say, Oh yeah, I'm all in. Take me on a ride. I have to be very selective in that. And, and you're one of the few people that I, um, I trust in, in, in this business. And the people though, that I've, I've found to be trustworthy are the ones that are not just saying they're helping people. We're not helping people and saying that comes with a $399 a month price tag that they're actually helping people. And if there's collaboration and, and money to be made as a business, whatever, I get that it's, it's America and it's capitalism and I love it. But I think it, in, at your core and at the people that I've, I've found in this industry to be respectable and that I trust, that's the common thread is that service connected mindset. Service to many leads to greatness. So I want to be around service oriented people who at the end of the day um, don't care about the paycheck. They'll take it right. Jim Rohn talks about it all the time, but it's really about being a service. I mean, simple, small acts that you can do right now in your own community doesn't take, a lot of work. It just means being kind to your neighbor, seeing something, tell somebody, you know, put in and pull in a garbage can, you know, in the neighborhood for your neighbor, mow their lawn. Like you, we can do stuff today to help people. Um, I think we still live in a society where we're cautious. We, we, we wait for something and then we do something and I'm like, Hey, look, trash on the ground. I'll walk out of the store and I'm like, that trash shouldn't be here. Let me just put it away. And then I'll watch people walk past it. I'm not saying I'm better than, I'm just realizing that I can do my part. When I got out of bed today, I keep thinking of gone, of gone. Be the change you wish to see in this world. 
I wish for people to pick up trash. I wish for people to hold doors. I wish for people to buy the person behind them a cup of coffee. I wish for people to take a moment out of their day to call their mom while they can. I wish that people would, would spend some time bettering themselves, listening to personal development, writing in their journal, going for a walk. I wish people would do that because I can wish all I want and then I gotta remind myself I can do all those things myself. So I, I just worry about me and then the reflection that I hope you see and the world sees is somebody who cares. I did a rant this morning. I don't know if you saw the video rant I did this morning. No. I, I just happened to, I was, it was a, a humor based rant. Um, like, for me, I am literally uber aware of everything around me. Absolutely. If, I, if your eyes change directions, I'm watching to see why your eyes change directions. Like, I see micro movements in everyone. It's like, it's like uh, a medium hears voices. I see movement. I see. Oh, I'm so, always in observation mode. Everything that's going on around me, I'm observing. And and for me, that seems like it should be normal. Like that's what I want other people to be aware of their surroundings, and not not just in the the hyper weird way I have it, but just like you know, understand if you somebody's standing behind you, or if you're in a trying to make a left hand turn in a single lane roadway that you move closer to the double yellow line so that people behind you can get by you and not have to wait for you to make your left turn like stupid stuff like if you're in the grocery store in your shopping cart and you're standing in the middle of the aisle looking at the wall of food and you have no idea that there's 15 people trying to get by you down to the other end of the aisle and then you get offended when they ask you to move out of the way like those are the things that bother the shit out of me because yes. it's not the act of what they're doing it's just the fact that they were so dumbfounded that they were actually causing a disruption in the universe and well, they were aware of it. I totally agree. And I think a lot of times people don't even know that they do that. They're just aloof to it. Like, Oh really? And I'm like, all right. So what I, we were talking before the show and I, I, I wish people would record the beginning of shows prior to the show. That's some of the best meat you'll ever eat. Right. Um, which for me really tells me I need to show grace because grace was showed to me and it is, I, like I told you with a walk with my wife, my first response is usually selfish and self-centered. So it's no. So my first thought is get out of the way, move your cart. Come on. Like, don't you see all these people? And my second thought really is, Hey, how are you? Do you need some help? Can I get something for you? Like, that's really what I try to shift to. It doesn't always happen, but that's what I try to shift to because I realize not everybody has it figured out. And you know what? Maybe she's saying, yeah, like, it's up on the top shelf. And I'm like, well, God made me six foot six. So let me get that for you. Right. And it's, I got a, a free selfie arm. So you want me to take your photo too? Like there's some things that I'm so grateful that I have that uh, unless I stop and I do this a lot, I tell people, check your pulse, find your pulse. And that tells you you're alive. No matter what you're going through, you can get through it. So let's figure out how we can do it with grace. And well, now, uh, now you make me feel like the jerk off because I did a, an eight minute rant this morning on people's inability to be aware of their surroundings. No, it's just grace. Right. And, you know, some, when, sometimes I look at it like um, I am so thankful that I've got great people around me um, who constantly are reminding me, hey, Tony, you could have done that differently. Thank you very much. What do you see? Because I have blind spots. We all do. Even in your police car, there's a blind spot. Now, here's what's crazy about that blind spot. It's only a blind spot once, and it's a choice from there on out. Yep. So you know where it is. So you know now you have to turn your head, look in the mirrors, check your you know, surroundings every single time that you go to move in that car because you know it has a blind spot. So now you know better. So you're re you need to keep your reminder going like, hey, I need to do better. I need to double check before I pull out so you don't cause problems. And that's the same thing I just need to remind everybody. Everybody's got blind spots. They're all trying to figure them out, too. Well, I'm hoping that this show opens up some blind spot for people that are driving in the middle of the road or shopping the center of the aisle and yeah. to realize that they've got some uh, some some spatial awareness to uh, – my dog's got spatial awareness issues, too. When he jumps on the couch, he's a 100-pound mass. Right right? And he's, like, right here. And I'm like, dude, you way, way back up. Back up. But – I, I love, I love the opportunity to get perspective from every one of my guests, whether it's Kurt Schilling or Irish Mickey Ward or uh, you know, Josh Berglin and whoever. Everybody's got their perspective on life. Mr. Invincible, yeah, yeah. Vince Papali, who everybody's got got their perspective based on their life experiences, and um, you know we talked about grace beforehand and. 
you know, I was shown grace um, with the gift of that quilt that was given to me by, made out of my brother's clothes, which is what literally saved my life. Um, it wasn't, um, I don't think my grandmother intended it to save my life, um, but it did. And everybody's at some point in time, if you are shown grace by God or shown grace by another person, you have to put that into some level of a high priority context that says this was a magnificent moment and it, it could be a shifter in your life. And for me, it opened up the 26,000 words that I wrote that night and that became the basis for the book that became the basis for me going into schools and talking to kids with, about disabilities and leadership to becoming a speaker and a podcaster. So, I mean, it, it all started with the gift of a quilt mm. and, and being shown grace. And you were shown grace by a phone call and then a knock on your door that allowed you to identify the shift that was required in your life to get to where you wanted to be and not be stuck where you were. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. I think for uh, kind of spitting that full circle. I mean, it, it's all, everything that I'm going through or experiencing in life, I really, really believe was already set in stone and I'm just experiencing it. I'm just experiencing, uh, you know, family, and, you know, kids going off to college and like my wife and I planned those things. We just forgot about them sometime along the way. And then they smack right down. And they're like, Oh, your kids are gone. And now we're looking at each other trying to say, you know, what are we doing? And so my wife and I have some dreams and we're working on those dreams together. And, and we've created such a magical life together that, um, you know, our, our kind of our sad story or song for those three years has been something that's helped a lot of people uh, get through their difficult times. And so I've always been very thankful that God had grace on our marriage. I always remember what my pastor says. Um, I reached out to him today even um, just to just to say thanks. I didn't get his, uh, his phone to ring, but uh, he told me, you know, love is a decision and you have a choice every single day. And you got to you, you got to make that thing. And so with people and with you, I said yes, because, you know, Matt, at the end of the day, I believe in you. I really do. I think, you know, even talking to Dove and hey, Dove's like, hey, you know this guy? I'm like, dude, just have him on your show. He's a great guy. Like um, people need to help others. And if you, you know, because you can go to that selfish, self-centered mindset really, really easy. Or you can go to the, the empowered mindset that says, sure, let me help somebody today. You don't have to help everybody, but just you know, in my in my twelve step, there's a there's a personal story. It says, you know, in the very very back of the book, it's like, what is God's will for me, right? Like, I never sit and do nothing while waiting for God to tell me what to do. I do what's ever in front of me to be done, and I leave the results up to God. However, it turns out that's God's will for me. Um, so I'm just trying to do the next right thing, whatever that is. And I and I think that, you know, when I when I do talks when I working with kids when I'm talking to people in the barbershop that I hang out in while I'm on duty. Cause obviously I, I got to get a lot of haircuts. Um, but the, the, your ability to connect, like I, I, people, I'm six, three, 250 pounds, bald cop. I, I like to think I'm in decent shape. At least I look like I am. I found out when I started going back and doing cardio again, that I was a, at a 90 year old set of lungs. But, um, but the, the reality is, is that I want to I want to put myself out there for you, so that when when we have our connection, it's real, right? That it's it's not um, in passing. It's not um, hey, what's up? And then that's it. Like I want when we meet, I want there to be real, honest, heartfelt connection. I want you to go. That's somebody that I can go to. Sure, if I need something. That's why I named my company. I got you. My entire life since I was a little kid. When my neighbor was getting beat up by his dad and I ran in and punched his dad right in the chest so that he could get away. And I told him, I got you. And that, that's been my life ever since. And that's why when, when somebody said to me, why did you name your company? I got you. It's because of that. Literally, it's the first words that come out of my mouth when I'm helping somebody is I got you. Don't worry. And I think that's an important component that's missing in today's um, fast paced social media phone, the heads buried in their phone. Um, lack of personal connection world that we live in um, is that ability to connect and um, have somebody just sort of believe in you. Yeah. You know, uh, <clears throat> my dad died 
uh, several years back. And at the end of his life, he had Alzheimer's and dementia. And my dad, I idolized my father. My dad was the most connected individual. He produced the Miss California pageant for 30 years. I loved watching him walk into a room. He commanded presence. He, he worked really, really, really hard. And he had his own demons that he had to fight and his own battles that he had to deal with. Um, and I've taken a lot of kind of who I am from modeling, modeled a lot of great teachers and mentors and who have helped me to realize, you know what, they're all figuring it out too. So why don't we figure it out together? And I mean, my message is not crazy. My message is just really, I just want to be a mirror to hold up so you can see your reflection and where you feel like there's doubt. I want to speak truth and wherever I can guide you, walk with you, talk with you. I want to encourage you and I'm grateful that God placed me in a wonderful neighborhood with my neighbor across the way. Uh, Todd always tells me, you know, everybody's teaching you something, good lesson or bad lesson. Everybody's a teacher. And I'm just trying to get better lessons today in my life from the right teachers. And I'm learning sometimes they're not the best teachers. They were just the teachers I needed to help get me to the next level. Um, doesn't mean that I don't want to be around them. It just means that they can only take you so far. And, you know, coaches and mentors are people too. And uh, they only know what they know. And so um, I got up today and I'm in the, I'm in learn, I'm in the learning mode right now. I'm trying to figure out how to take a business from, you know, eight figures and turn it into a nine figure business. I'm doing things that I've never done before. I'm launching things that we've never even saw that we could even do, but we knew we had an imagination and we got creative and figured it out. Um, I just love doing what you just were talking about. You know, I got you led to, a quilt led to, I got you punching, you know, the dad in the chest to, you know, your, your brother passing, you writing, writing in the moment, writing 26,000 words, turning that into your book, turning that into your speaking engagement, turning that into the career that you have today and everything that you're about and moments matter. And so make the moments matter with the people who do in your life. And I think you're going to live in just, an, just an amazing life. And that's all I'm trying to figure out. Everybody is trying to figure out the same damn thing. They're, uh, even the, the, the people you see on their soapbox or people you see selling out arenas and, and conferences with personal development, I will tell you they're some of the loneliest people in the world. They, it's not all peaches and cream. It really is. They're trying to figure it out because my wife will encourage me because I, I have a tendency to do this. And I, this is probably one thing that I need to work on more than any. Um, when I get around people, I check out because I'm bored. It's not like... I mean to be bored. It just means the conversation. It's not even needing to be about me. It's just not moving in a direction that I feel like I want to be a part of. So I feel like I'm wasting my time. Um, and, you know, she helps me to say, hey, this is part of growing. This is part of relationships. Like, it's not always going to be personal development. It's not always going to be self-help moment. And I'm like, I know, I know, I know. And those are the things that I got to remind myself of. And that's where the grace comes in. And I'm like, all right. And you know what, if I just let my guard down, I went to a concert a couple weeks ago and at the end of the night, she leaned over and she's like, you look like you were having so much fun. You were dancing and just singing. And we went to a Red Rocks concert here in Colorado, listening to UB40. And my buddy, uh, one of my dear friends, Ian came with his wife uh, from Florida. And I'm just sitting there, I'm dancing, having a good time. And she just looked over at me and I could just see she was happy because I was just being free. I wasn't trying to be the Tony, the personal development guy. Yeah, I, I have, um, I'm very similar in that I, I, um, I have a hard time just relaxing, um, unless I'm around like my family or my close friends or whatever. But if I go into a new environment, I'm immediately in Intel gather, uh, I'm, <laughs> everybody up. I'm watching body language. I'm figuring out who's full of shit, who's not full of shit. And I spend hours doing this and it's not intentional. It's just what I automatically do. I have to, yeah. I have to force myself to not do that sometimes. And that's, I mean, just like you, it's, it's one of the hardest things for me to do is to shut down that part of me that lives. How do you sleep? How do you sleep at night? Um, I'll be honest, vodka, <laughs> but that's not a good thing. And I've actually just started doing. The one, the reason why I asked is because if you ask my wife, the moment my head hits the pillow, I'm out. It's like, I just gas myself to the point where I'm like, I'm done. I literally don't have, I don't have it done. I just keep going and my brain does. I would literally get two hours sleep a night if, if I just let myself naturally 
fall asleep. So and it's, it's been maybe look at the journal, maybe look at the idea of writing things down. Yeah, I've been writing every night, and it all it does is create more thoughts. So That's where I end up lost. Let me flip the script for you and see if this would be useful because anybody listening, if they have the same problem or the same situation where they um, trying to go to bed at night, but their their mind is playing, right? The tapes, old tapes, new tapes, and they're trying to create. Um, I love to write down in the evening before I go to bed, just journal, and then um, literally step away from that spot. So try not to journal in bed necessarily. Um, put your de your devices far enough out of your reach. Uh, clean your mind, clear your mind, and you know, like for myself, Amber and I will, you know, we'll be on our phones a few minutes before bed, but you know, just try to to share a little bit about what's going on in your day, and then share a little bit about what you're journaling. Because what I realized in my head is fantasy. When I speak, it becomes possibility. And the end result I'm looking is for the reality, which is I need sleep tonight. I need, you know, usually Tony gets four to five hours of sleep on a good night, maybe six or seven. But I am optimal, like, at four and a half to five hours. Like, I literally crush it. Uh, when I get too much sleep, I, I get slowed down. And all I was saying is, is like, you already know that you said vodka at night, right? I'm not judging. I'm just saying, like, you already oh, know it. Trust so, me, I don't like it. <laughs> that you do. So um, if you don't want to do it, when you're sick and tired of doing it every single night, you'll decide to change. Yep. And it can start tonight. It's been uh, – Like it literally can start right now. Like you literally say like I'm, tonight I am going to not uh, drink before I go to bed. Tonight I'm just going to go for a walk. I'm going to go do some push-ups. I'm gonna, because all that is is just a thought that literally comes into your brain and says – Trigger, ooh, let's go have a drink. And that's why I love The Power of Habit by uh, Charles Dewey. I love the book because it just talks about the triggers. There's the, the, the cue, right? There's the trigger and the reward. And when you see that thing happen, you're like, oh, I'm going to go do that. Well, let's just change the result. Let's go do something different. And th that same endorphins and everything else are going to get released. It's just going to be more healthier and natural for you. And you're going to feel better when you wake up in the morning. That's all. I'm just throwing out a healthy well, situation. Listen, man, I'm, I'm at uh... – I'm at that 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 stage now where I've actually uh, I so I have a rheumatoid condition. So 90% of my problem is my brain. The other 10% is is pain, <laughs> and so now I'm working through some. Well, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for getting out to the gym, making your health a priority, wearing a Fitbit, doing the the hard stuff, making it matter because it, the world needs more of your story. And so you're just getting healthier, so you can go share it from more stages and and more schools and you can make a bigger impact in your community and a difference now you can chase down those people when they run and get away right you can get them where you couldn't a couple of years ago my, my my chase of people days are over i'll get them another day that's my thing um listen man i i any chance i get you know, normally i get you in in 15 minute increments just because of your schedule so i do i highly appreciate the fact that you're giving me an hour of your life tonight um and i know that uh you have other things you could be doing today. And I, and I appreciate that you made this your priority today. So that means a lot to me personally. Um, let's tell people what you're doing now as far as the event that you're having, um, the journal, the, the Be Fulfilled Journal, and all the other stuff you have going on so people can participate and learn all the great things you're doing. Well, thank you for that opportunity and I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to this. It was on my calendar. My wife thought last night what was funny was it was then. And so she went out and did stuff and then came home. And I'm like, no, 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 it's tomorrow night. So I'm just blessed and grateful that I got to spend some time with you. Um, three things that I'm doing right now and three things that I'd love you to look at. If anything that I said today really resonated with you. Um, first and foremost, I'm all about community. And the power of community goes really, really deep in my life. And so I launched a journal called Be Fulfilled. And it came from a statement that was on the office wall. And it was the be fulfilled kind of mantra of like, that's the professional side. Like, hey, we'll, we'll help you to be fulfilled. We'll take care of all your packages and shipping and get all that stuff out. That's the journal right there. And what I realized was I wasn't fulfilled in my life, in my personal life. And so I took that, that, that moniker from be fulfilled, from being on our wall, and I just said, hey, you know what? Let's go find and help people with personal fulfillment. Because if I can help people on the personal side, their professional side will get that much better, right? And so it's been kind of a vehicle to 
our clients use it. We send it out as a gift to our clients to say thanks. We, we, I love seeing all the people share it. It's a journal and a 12-week course all built into one. So BeFulfilledJournal.com is what I really set out to do. And my next one um, that's launching in about eight weeks is called Be Fulfilled Recovery. And it's not just about alcoholism recovery. It's about everybody's dealing with something in recovery. Recovery from somebody who died, somebody going through a marriage. And so um, that's my next project. I'm really passionate about that. And I'm, I'm ready to change uh, more lives with the simple tool of writing down what you're feeling and thinking. I wish somebody would have told me that earlier. And I'm so grateful. It's just a simple tool. You don't even need to buy a journal to do it. But you can take a piece of paper out and start getting those thoughts out of your head. So that first and foremost is that. Everything that I do, everything that I'm about is supported by ship offers. I love the fact that I have an incredible business partner and people in my life that encourage me to go pursue the things that I love. Um, you know, I come to work every day and it's more like play. Uh, I get to be on the phone with some of the, the most awesome entrepreneurs all around the world, trying to figure it out from Australia to the UK to Canada to, you know, Indiana, like literally trying to figure it out. We're talking about life. And so shipoffers.com is my, is my life. It, it, I wear it on my shirt. I think about it 24 seven. I'm, we just had our busiest Monday in our 18 year history of our business. I'm always working on how to get better. And then the last piece where I'm really passionate about, and uh, I'm super excited, encouraged that ship offers got behind it and we're using it and doing it is launching an event called Ecom and influence. Uh, dot com and it's really an opportunity for anybody who is passionate about selling an item online learning about e-commerce wanting to figure out how to scale and traffic and, and get eyeballs onto something and the influences is really what matt you were talking a little bit about today there's a lot of influencers out there and some of them you're like should i follow them some of them i shouldn't and what we've done is brought some of the world's best influencers and in to really tell you the things that they've done, the things that they're doing that's working for them to build their brand, their identity, a lot of what the world sees, but I'm doing it in an authentic way. And I'm, I'm inviting over 25 speakers to come in and share their story um, and to be a part of something really, really, really big. Matt, I'm gonna throw this out to you personally. I would love you to make sure that you come. We'll figure out how to get you there on a Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Come and experience it. And we'll try to throw you on one of our panels. I'm not saying that just to say it, I'm saying it because just like you asking to, hey, if you're ever looking for a guest, I'd love you to think of having me on your show. I want you to come and be a part of it because I want to give you what I believe for me is the best thing I can give, which is my time. And I'm already going to be there. Why don't you come and be a part of it? It's uh, happening August 11th through the 13th in Denver, Colorado. We'll figure out the details. I'm just giving you that invite and, and that invitation. Thank Anybody you. today want to buy a ticket? Save you four hundred dollars. Just use early bird. We're in the early bird stage right now. Save you four hundred dollars off your ticket. It's not a money thing. It's a motivation thing. And when you're ready to kind of change your your business or where you're at, um, it literally costs you money to do something about it because it's costing you time. You're wasting it one way or the other. The best in investment you'll ever make is getting to a live event. In my opinion, it's the one where you get outside of your daily routine. It's breaking the habit of the nine to five. It's sitting around a bunch of people who are like-minded and positive, who are being encouraged, who are thinking about, hey, I met a new friend today. That's going to be my person, my accountability friend. That's that person that's going to help me get to that next level. That person's going to build community with. And then being around positivity and being around like-minded individuals is something that I want to be around all the time. And you were talking about it earlier even from your rant this morning, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just sometimes we get lost and stuck in our old ways and our new ways tell us, hey, what I want, I've never done before. So I need to get around people who have done it. And that's my whole goal with Ecom and Influence is to bring like-minded individuals, people who've done it. So it makes your job so much easier to achieve success. Well, brother, thank you for that in, but I truly do appreciate that. And, and I love all the things you're doing, how you're, you're creating opportunities for other people to be successful um, through your network, through your influence, through your um, your heart, and, and I love that. And one of the things, you know, as a mentor to kids, I I've been around a lot of very influential people, um, famous people, uh, Tim Tebow, and I've learned. I take pieces from every person that I I get to personally know that I respect that I that I find to be. Um, in the same mind space that I'm in. And one of the things that I never, I never considered journaling a thing in my life. Um, mm -hmm. 
But one thing I, I once I started doing it, um, and, you know, I guess I did journal after I when I started writing my book. You know, I I, I spent eight hours writing twenty six thousand words. Um, that was a very long journal entry. Um, but what I do now is I have all my kids that I mentor. They journal, so yeah. they, they write every day a summary of their day, um, and then when we meet. We, we go through every single day so they can relive it and go back and they'll remember things. And, and it just brings that, that whole week or two weeks period to life again. And it allows me to live it with them. And then we talk about it. And, and I think it's been something that, and I got that from you. Um, you know, no one else really ever mentioned, at least not in a way that it's, it resonated with me about journaling and the value of journaling. So I do appreciate that because um, it's really been helpful with my kids. I think the most important thing you just said is reflection. And uh, that's what I want people to do today. Listen to the show. If something you know jumped out, resonated with you, Matt will drop my name. Again, uh, you can Google me. You can send me a message. You can find me on social media. I do my best to answer messages. Matt, Matt's confirmation that it's possible that I, I will get back to you. Um, but the thing that you can do is you can grab a piece of paper before you go to bed or start your morning tomorrow and just envision what you want your day and your life to look like. I always tell people in the morning dream and the evening reflect. Um, really, you know, create your day, create it with passion, but but share it with somebody. You don't have to share all of the details, but just share it with somebody. Um, I don't want you to go through life feeling like you're alone. And, you know, now that you're doing that with a group of kids you're mentoring, it's giving them an outlet. So the thoughts they think they, they can have somebody look over and go, hey, yeah, I feel that same way. And they're not alone. And they realize, okay. And then you can suggest things. And that's all I've hopefully been able to do on the show is throw out a bunch of suggestions. Because that's what I remind myself I need to do. I need, these are just suggestions. I'm testing everything. I'm constantly uh, in defrag mode of getting rid of stuff that doesn't work and adding new stuff that does. I'm always upgrading my hard drive. I'm always making sure that I've got my virus protection on so like things don't get in and start slowing me down. And so journaling is a great way to take the thoughts that you're thinking, get them down on paper, share them with somebody, pray about them or let them go like as a thought or something and then move on. And, and it's something that's super healthy and you can do it today by grabbing a piece of paper and just drop down uh, words. And maybe it'll be eight hours and 26,000 words later and you'll have your book. But the idea is, is you have tons of stuff going on in your head. Let's get some of it down on paper so you can actually make sense of it. And it's and just a, a one side note. My daughter, obviously, she's a very talented swimmer. She was an all-American swimmer in college. And, and you know, I didn't know this until maybe two years ago that she is literally – she writes down every practice she's ever had since ninth grade, the set list, how many, what, how many yards of this stroke and this kick and this and that. And she does that because she then goes and sees when she had success and didn't have success and can make changes based off of the known pattern that this is what I did and this is what this produced. Where can I make tweaks and changes? And I think that's just a microcosm of, of the value of, of journaling and writing down your thoughts and because you can go back and look at it and see where you were at a point in time and, and understand why things were the way they were from more of a, like a 35,000 foot view after it's over. I yeah, think definitely. It's and, and if you're listening and you're like, Hey, you know, let me throw out a discount coupon. It'll save you some of your shipping. Uh, just uh, be fulfilled journal.com summer. Just type in summer. It'll save you some money. My whole thing is, is you don't need my journal. What you need is any piece of paper that you can find to just journal on. If you're like, wow, like Tony's talk today on fulfillment, personal and professional, then that's what my journal has in it is a 12 week course. It's a journey to fulfillment. It's really 12 things from life dumpster to the stories we tell ourselves to thoughts and things to literally figuring out like what it is that you want your, your next 12 years, 15 years, 20 years of your life to look like it all starts taking a step. And, th and that's all Matt. Like I want anybody listening today to do is realize that by listening to this episode, they bettered their lives. They have bettered themselves because two people having a really honest conversation. We talked about marriage issues. We, we talked about alcoholism. We talked about depression. We talked about autism. We talked about death. We talked about being a champion for others and mentorship. I mean, what a great episode. This is better than me sitting in front of the television tonight and watching a rerun of something that I've seen a thousand times, having a real conversation with somebody who really cares. That's why I said yes to the show. That's why I said I wanted to come on and be a part of what you're doing because I love it. 
because it's all about the two dashes. The dash, it's literally about the date you're born and the date you die, which you don't know, and the dash, did you really live? Did you really live your life to the best and to its fullest? And, you know, I got to tell you, like, today, man, I am blessed and grateful and thankful that you said, hey, Tony, you want to come on my show? I get to go home and be with my wife and literally sit back and just say, hey, you know, today was a good day. I can't wait to go do it all again tomorrow. Well, that's a great way to end the show. But I did, and I told you from the very beginning that I'm going to start plugging my book because I'm a horrible salesman. Somebody told me I suck, and I forgot to do it. So I'm going to do it at the end. Uh, here we go. Brothers Love a Memoir. If anybody wants to buy this, go to Amazon. You too. Um, it's it's a it's an honest story uh, about my life with my my hero, my my best friend, my brother Andy, um, who passed away in 1989. So if anyone who wants a good summer read that uh, hopefully will inspire you to live your life. Um, with an intentional purpose, um, then I, I would highly recommend you read my book. Tony, don't go anywhere. We're gonna talk for a couple minutes offline. Everybody, thank you very much for watching this episode of the Two Dates and Dash podcast. I'm your host, Matt Kubler. Thank you again to my very special guest, my buddy, my mentor, Tony Grebmeyer. Um, I'm gonna put all his links in the comments on Facebook. Um, I truly do appreciate when people pay attention to what I'm putting out there. Um, it means a lot to me personally. I hope that what I'm bringing to the table is inspiring, that it is um, something that you can use in your life, whether it's today or, or it's somewhere down the road when you need um, something to, to, to pick you up and make you get back on the, the horse and ride. Um, I just hope that one day that one of these episodes does that for you. So thank you again, everybody. God bless. And for God's sakes, be kind to one another.